uh, early recruitment of employees. How how to go about it and what kind of people to recruit, etc. This I'm finishing this in one lecture. This is a full subject, so that's it. Now Victor Hugo once said, I mentioned this earlier also. There is one thing strong stronger than all the armies in the world, and that is an idea whose time has come. If you can come up with an idea whose time has really come, nothing can be more important than that in terms of starting a business. But then you come up with an idea and then somebody else looks at it and he or she has better infrastructure or access to money or maybe they're much better expert in executing the idea into business model. Perhaps they will snatch the idea from you without your knowledge and then they will become successful and that's a great idea. So obviously that will create another Google. So the best example is that Yahoo started much before Google. And then valuation of Yahoo was $125 billion. I think $150, but most of the literature say $125. Then came Google. Now Google is more than a trillion dollar company, whereas Yahoo, after investing something like $30 billion, their value is still much less than $30 billion. This is because of execution and who executes. There is no mantra or anything. People execute smart people execute smartly and then they create success story. Smart people can circumvent any odd that that you may face. So team actually matters the most in a way, whether it's adventure or it's a joy ride. You need a team both to feel the excitement and share or to fall back up on when you really fall. A team, individuals with complementary skills. This is very important. Most of the people, what they do is uh, they team with batchmates, like classmates. Suppose you are from computer science and engineering. So you attend classes together. So gradually you build relation and you think that we are wonderful in terms of partnering with each other. So you, you can choose maybe two, three of classmates and then start a company. Usually or maybe experts say that it should everybody should bring some skill or skills that complement with the other meaning. Suppose you have some set of skills. You should look for another guy who can fill the void. You may not have all the skills, so somebody else will have those skills that makes complementarity brings complementarity. So if there are three guys, one becomes technology guy, the other becomes marketing, another maybe finance or maybe both finance and tech. Marketing guy also maybe finance and technology or something. There should be some common factors and an accentuation should be in different domains. So that makes a wonderful team, balanced team. It actually should be a balanced team. And the balanced team means balance of comp balance of skills, complementarity of skill. A great team has all critical competences for efficient execution, high level of collaboration, meaning every team member should gel well together and then they should share their their thinking, their knowledge so that you grow together. You, you complement in everything, committed to common goal. One person should, should not be more interested in the money. The other person is more interested in growth, sustainability, and third person may be quick gain and then run away or something. It doesn't work. There should be, it's called shared vision. Shared vision means, vision means where do you want to be in the long run? Maybe say after 10 years, 100 years, or where you see your company to be finally. So like Elon Musk say that, that uh, Tesla, not Tesla. Uh, what is the name of that? Another company that is launching rockets and all that. The, the vision is to reach to okay. send people. Uh, SpaceX, right? Thank SpaceX. you. SpaceX. Right, right. Thank you, SpaceX. So that the vision is to see that human being settle in Mars, something like that. So that is the final vision, though it may be achieved perhaps in 25 years or it may take 100 years by the time perhaps Elon Musk will not be there, but then company will continue to work with that vision. So if if all the members of the team 
do not share the same vision. If somebody shares the vision that we will ferry people and earn money, that's it. We don't want to you know, go into those human settlement on Mars or anything. Then perhaps everything will collapse by its own weight. It will not go much farther. And that is about founding team. Now, know that founding team doesn't mean all our co-founders, all our equity shareholders. Initial recruits are also part of the founding team. In fact, from outside, it will look like they are co-founders, whereas perhaps they are employees. They will behave in a manner as if they are co-founders. Not only that, they will at, at times they are even more than co-founders. But then you have to empower them to think that way. I'll give an example. I thought I'll give much later. Larry Pays in one meeting, in Google's meeting, uh, was reflecting to a question. You know, there was he was giving a delivering a lecture to teach people something, and a guy, a trainee, not a trainee, but somewhat senior trainee, immediately, you know, snapped and said, "This is nonsense." Everybody in the room thought he's losing his job. You know, he's the boss, he's Larry Pace, none other than Larry Pace. And you are just an intern and you say, this is nonsense at his face, you're going to lose his job. So Pace took some time, relaxed, and he said, can you clarify more? Because you're not saying anything. So tell me what, what nonsense you look at it. Then he clarified something. Larry Pace said, okay, sit down. Sit down, I'll, I'll, we'll have a separate We'll, we'll talk it outside the class because you are taking the discussion to something different. In the next class, Larry Pace explained that he had a deliberation with that guy and he appreciated his point of view, though he mentioned that there is a better way of reflecting, a, a, a more you know, soft way of reflecting to anybody without hurting anybody. Whatever that is, he was not fired, he was appreciated. No, whether he was promoted or not, I don't know, but the story goes like this, that he was appreciated publicly, that this guy raised an issue and we discussed it over and I found that he had a point and this is going to do good to the company. So th this is not, not an example of early recruit, but early recruit actually behave like that. They will challenge the very co-founders of the company in which they are employees. But being founders, you should be able to appreciate anything and everything that is for the good of the company. You don't get emotional. You don't get get carried away by the fact that you are the owners and they are the employees. Then there is no company. Then uh, you will miss all your good employees one by one. You will not be able to keep them because anybody worth his salt is going to reflect like that. They don't care. If, if the, the more talented a person, the more direct the reactions are likely to be because they know that they don't care. They can just walk in into another company and get a job. So if you want to keep them, if you, if you want to use their talent for the good of the company, your, your main focus should be the company, not really all those emotions, etc. If you think that somebody is going to contribute to the company, you always can you know, talk it over. You can always Educate a person that, OK, you have a wonderful point, but then present it in a more presentable manner. We are all, we are all human. Whatever that is, you will have your own way of doing that. There is no there is no uh, hard way. I mean, there is no formula for treating people. Everybody has his or her own way of, you know, uh, dealing with employees or other people. Now, everybody should be committed to the same goal, share the same vision. As I said, initial employees are like. I was disconnected perhaps and reconnected perhaps. So I hope that you can hear. So share the same vision. Initial employees are as good as co-founders and hiring decision should be based on missing skill. Meaning if you see that somebody is a, is a super technology guy and you don't actually need another technology guy, then it, there is no point recruiting another guy. In the, at the initial stage, it's very, 
money is is a most scarce thing so if you do not have so much money there is no point uh, starting to burn cash by recruiting talent at the same time if you find that somebody is can critically contribute and can cut down the time of product development to half or something even out of the way you should borrow money or you should pay top class salary and and keep that person at any rate so that you have a faster accelerated path to to uh, go commercial and then earn profit startup journey is full of ups and downs it's highly highly rugged not rugged highly highly you know bumpy so at any point of time there is always the threat of losing or or the death of the company like this this is a journey from uh, missouri river uh, it's us in us but uh, i don't have the full story maybe in the next slide i have no whatever i deleted this the slide so the, the people come here for excitement suppose you are on this boat and uh, if anybody is thinking of his or her personal life not bothered so much about the lives of the team the chances of of losing everybody is much more than if everybody thinks that we are a team and i have to save everybody else's life before i save my life if everybody thinks that way that everybody's life is more important than mine perhaps only then they can reach to the destination when journey is so very challenging so the same thing applies to startup if everybody is thinking of their own prosperity prospect and uh, and uh, you know fear of failure etc then uh, the startup will not go anywhere it has to be a joint vision a shared vision and you should all try to achieve that vision and keep aside personal ambition personal yeah sorry i was again disconnected uh, for whatever reason so uh, i'm starting all over no importance of a balanced team i have already underlined but let me see what i have here some experts relate co-founder with uh, prospective match for marriage but co-founders do not have the glues that are there in marriage and they have greater challenges so it requires greater commitment than what you need in a marriage many startup fail because of dispute between founders so one has to be very careful while selecting the founders at the beginning itself rather than thinking that we'll resolve it later 70% of weight is put on the team suppose you are pitching before investors or you submit your proposal to bank they will look at the team and put 70% weight on the team suppose all are from iits and uh, they have complementary skills and uh, they are almost like prepared to die for each other they will think that this team can never be defeated this is the right team and the decision to fund will be highly swayed based on the team's balance whereas if the team is highly heterogeneous and uh, they are not connected with a very solid glue like say bodies from the from the same university same college or something like that it is just you know uh, almost like recruitment you have advertised and found partners something like that or in a in a party you just met somebody in a train in a in an aeroplane while traveling you just meet somebody and then you find that you are uh, looking for the same kind of strategy some kind of businesses and you partner this doesn't work and investors don't like that way it's very important in a nutshell so there are several uh, several consideration for finding finding co-founders so co-founders early employees advisors mentors they can create wonderful barrier against 
new entrant into your dom domain or if, if you want to break the barriers raised by others, existing players. So that is how it can actually help. Then you get access to need best fund, need technologies through whatever, maybe complementary skill. And you have to continuously be able to resolve conflicts so that you don't break. Life of a CEO can really be lonely because you are besotted with problems all the while. Though I have been making all negative connotations, but fact is not so negative in reality. But then there are moments when you need support from somebody. Somebody's, you, you, whenever there is low, you want to hold somebody or somebody should tell you that don't worry, I am there. And whenever there is highs, like say some success, you achieve some success, there should be somebody with whom you can enjoy, you can celebrate. So you need, need company. Then uh, otherwise your hard skill, your resilience, your vision, passion, courage, which are highly essential, but then it can, it can take you so far. They are definitely prerequisite, but then a team is highly necessary. Successful entrepreneurs like Steve Jobs, Larry Page, Elon Musk, Thomas Alva Edison, they were all successful and they uh, credit their success, attribute their success to their teams rather than the themselves individually. Alva Edison attribute that he has so many patents. There are dispute about his number of patents. Some says 1762, here I have 2332 granted patents and Alva Edison himself said, that these patents would not have been possible unless there were a team. For every patent, there was a team. So I, I was kind of heading the team, giving them ideas or keeping the team as one team, as I was giving a single thread of thought rather than you know diffusing their thought in different directions. That's what actually focus their talent, channels, they could channelize their talent in one direction and that is how we achieved success. The same thing happens in startup. Everybody has qualities, has talent, but then there should that talent should be channelized in one direction, not in many directions. In your is if your founding team doesn't have the right balance of personalities and skill, you could soon be closing up shops. That's what who said this. It's not written. Brent Skoner is from. MIT, I believe, having the right team determines the path and outcome of new venture more than any decision in the life cycle of a company. It's it's written in the book, the Tech Entrepreneur Survival Guide, Magro, Magro Hill. You can lay your hands on that and then start reading. The founding team cannot be changed. This is important. If you think that, okay, let me start the company, then after a year or two, I will find new co-founders and bring them on board it normally doesn't work meaning you already has given some kind of a culture in your company meaning you have initiated and then that culture matured around your philosophy your thought process now somebody coming from outside maybe he's he or she is a matured person so he she will have a very different kind of uh, philosophies and many other idiosyncrasies it's very hard to get out of it. So when that person enters inside your company, then he, he or she will say every now and then, I don't do it this way, and you should not be doing it that way, etc. I have seen things that happening this way, etc. etc. So it's very it becomes very difficult to bring in new co-founders and then uh, grow as a as a balanced team with synergy. Synergy meaning one plus one is equal to more than two, meaning you are one founder, you bring another founder, both work together. If you are if you are kind of synergistic, then your effort plus other person's effort will lead to much more than the sum total of the outcome of individuals. But if you don't gel well, if you are bringing another guy later, you will find that it doesn't work that way. Meaning two, one plus one will be most of the times it will be 0.5 because you will spend much of your talent, much of your time resolving conflict rather than you know contributing to the company. One good example is Micromax. Micromax is a 25,000 crore rupees company. 
they did not have their own manufacturing, their own cell phone, they were outsourcing. But then their phones were good quality. Even I had one phone at some point of time. After about four to five years, I used to hear people asking me, when did you buy this? Meaning, is it a new phone? It was so nice. It was looking like Blackberry and uh, as a QWERTY keyboard phone. I enjoyed the phone so much. But then when their valuation was 25,000 crore, they thought that we'll take the company to a new level. So they hired a new team. Means they become co-founder. And then that actually led to the collapse of Micromax. These two teams did not did did not go well together so that is that is why i don't know there may be many other reasons so unless it is available in public domain there is no way to know but somewhere i found people are talking about this that micromax failed because the founder original founder and the new founders did not go well together okay even sam altman said adding co-founder later becomes difficult. Sam Altman is the vice president of Y Combinator. By now you definitely know what is Y Combinator. It's the first accelerator and the la largest, greatest accelerator based out of Silicon Valley. Whatever that is, he said two to three co-founders is the best. A single co-founder normally doesn't work well. More than three co-founder, particularly when it is more than four, it becomes a crowded place and they end up spending too much time resolving conflict rather than you know promoting or or facilitating growth of the company. Okay. Now, when you decide about acquiring co-founder or you know inviting co-founder, there are some things that you must note notice one is clearly define your vision first of all you should know what is the vision of your company if you are not clear about the vision if you got an idea hit upon an idea somehow and then you thought that i'll start a company then you start looking for co-founder another friend says oh, wow this is a good idea let us start the company now gradually you will realize that your vision and his vision is kind of not in the same line so first of all you define your vision and then share the vision before even sharing the idea, you share the vision that I would like to set up a company with a long term vision of doing this, this, this. Then you talk about the idea, make clear assessment of the skills you need. You have some skill and you lack some skills. So whatever you lack, you should look for those kind of skill, people with those kind of skill. Assess your own strengths and weaknesses. Identify suitable person with the skills that you lack. Check the level of drive motivation in individuals. Whether they have drive, they will drive an initiative, they will put everybody into energy, new energy and excite them, et cetera, et cetera. And then they will make sure that it is executed in time or maybe before time. Are they motivated? Are they motivated to work together or they're kind of frustrated or you know, they have negative thought, et cetera. Humility, openness to new ideas and readiness to collaborate on decisions are very important. This is perhaps the most important part of this presentation. Openness. Openness to new ideas. You will come up with some new ideas or somebody else comes up with a new idea. Most people who have a thread of thought, most people who have a thread of thought, if somebody comes up with some idea that is contrary to this thought, they will. it will immediately put them off. You think what? I was thinking this year and these guys have come up with something different and those people who are not open, they will think they will not even listen to the new ideas. Even if they listen, they will find some fault in that and they will find some good in their thought. This happens with most of the people and those most of the people are not good people for teamwork. For teamwork, they're not good people. In fact, uh, sorry to say that I have the problem. I have, I have been working with the faculty here at IIT. We have filed more than five patents together and we are about to transfer another technology. During the beginning onset of COVID, my partner came up with an idea that we should uh, develop a technology for uh, something, something related to COVID. Then I came up with an idea. He came up, came, came up with another idea. So we were discussing. So I came up with a very 
with one idea that I thought is the is the is a great idea. Now, when my partner threw some some other idea, I was not able to take it up, not able to digest that. Then eventually we had to stop that whole thought process, and I should blame myself for that, meaning that I I still don't see a good part in uh, his idea. So I don't say that I'm a great innovator or anything. I rather think that I had some limitation. That is why I could not uh, see the good thing in his idea. So it happens. It happens with everybody. So you should be very careful about selecting people. Emotional buoyancy. Like somebody gets frustrated too early, depressed too early. Those people are very difficult to handle. You say something. They may not react in front of you or they may react in front of you. Whether they do that, if they do that in, in, in isolation, you will not know that they are drifting, drifting further and further away from the team. And then there will, there will be a day when you cannot really you know, join him together and it will be a kind of a break. And a break is never good for a company because you grow together and everybody is a pillar. Everybody is a critical pillar to the enterprise. You break one pillar, the balance is lost. Then finding another person with that expertise that, you know, replacing that pillar becomes very difficult, as I said earlier also. Personal honesty is very important. If somebody is dishonest, like Sakrail, Michael Skrail, I talked about him while talking about entry barrier. If you identify that kind of a person, the moment you identify, you just get rid of him. If, if necessary, liquidate the company, but don't proceed with that person. If a person is dishonest, if a person is, is enjoys being unethical, whether it is for fun or it is for gain, that kind of a person will never lead a company which is successful. Eventually, they will end up fighting in the court of law for whatever they do. And if you are a part of that initiative, unnecessarily you will also be behind bar, or maybe you will engage, you will you will put a black mark on your character, on your future, on your present, everything. So most of the great people, not just your teacher, most of the great people say that never, 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 ever become a partner to a person who is not honest, who has ethical slackness. It doesn't work. And even if you see that you don't make a lot of profit because you are ethically so strict, even that is OK. Slow but steady will eventually win. But those people who always have the sh shortcut way of achieving something, they will eventually f fall from the precipice and they you will not be even be able to find them, find them. So it'll be, they will be kind of so down that they will be invisible. Then there is something called business process management skill. That is not the technology. That is the whole process through which you connect with customer. You give customer service. You uh, you resolve their the troubleshoot. You do the troubleshoot, resolve their complaints, grievances, etc., etc., in a seamless manner. If there is something some issues to be solved, there will be somebody or the other to take it up. It should be a seamless process. Only then a business runs, otherwise it, it, it fails somewhere. So efficient business process management skill, if somebody comes up with that kind of skill, is, a, is an asset. Intelligence, creativity, track record. So whenever you talk to somebody, if somebody talks big, you may be enticed to take him or her, but then Check the tracks, check the track record of what the person has already done, whether he's telling the truth or there is, if, if you see that it's not absolutely true and there are uh, kind of allowances here and there, if the allowance is big, meaning if there are big things that somebody is hiding, you should be very careful about that. It's always better not to go ahead with that person because when that person will be with you, he will, he or she will look for shortcut at your cost. So it's better to get rid of that person. Past collaboration. If somebody has collaborated with somebody, walked in a teamwork and uh, was a wonderful team member, that person should be good. Shared vision and shared values. Shared values means 
they give value to ethics they consider value to everything that they do yeah please mute somebody is talking to mom or dad please mute your mic laddie pace are given how they met they were lad i think uh, larry was senior i think then sargi brin joined uh, stanford when larry was already a scholar sargi later joined for doing phd there and then they found in their library they use something called backra and then uh, they started working on a search engine and eventually both of them came up with something something wonderful and that is how they teamed up i don't say that that is the only way or the best way to identify your team member but they 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 worked together for a while and then they had a wonderful vision look at the vision that is the most important information in this slide they had a vision that we are going to deal with information that is kind of a of a scale of light years something like that with the name google google actually is a play of the word google which is one followed by 100 zeros that is what is google so they had that vision that will come up with will come up with uh, with with a company that will catch information or that will hold information and disseminate in terms of google and their idea was so great that sun co founder andy has issued a check of 100 100000 dollar even when the company did not exist he just saw that these people are coming up with a with a search engine that will be the future of information searching so he just issued a check there are many things to consider for a team member one is team size that is 2 to 3 is the best there should be one person who should have a father figure like everybody will listen to him irrespective of whether he is the right he is right or wrong but most of the people will think all of all people will think whatever he says we should obey that meaning we should react meaning that you should explain what your point of view is and that person will also give importance to your views and finally if that person says that forget forget the difference do it this way everybody should follow that then history of founder working in a stressful situation you know handling stress is a very important quality in a startup because you will definitely be subjected to stress at every now and then founder's goal shared that should be shared goal ceo role there should be one person who has the capability to take the company to the new level like to a level of growth or something now ceo means if you if you want to i explain what are the traits of a ceo ceo is a great leader more importantly ceo has credential of running a business successfully at least running at least launching a product successfully and finally seeing that the product is accepted by the market meaning there are growing loyal customer base for the product so this life cycle product life cycle experience is essential for somebody to be a ceo equity philosophy equity means not equity share per se the dictionary meaning of equity is fair and impartial meaning everybody should be given their fair dues if somebody is putting more effort give him more this thing if somebody is more talented give him reward him accordingly shared vision shared values common core values meaning whether you are working for social value environmental value or national value whatever that is you share the same value in all transaction commitment commitment is very important if somebody is a sleeping partner and he or she is you know just uh, has invested some money and then you guys are working slogging that should not be the case everybody should be highly committed mix of skills trust and confidence like ability among yourselves founders need to be unflappable tough they know what to do in every situation they act quickly they are decisive they are creative they are ready to ready for anything that's what sam altman said of course waltman is sam is now not with y combinator he has quit the company i think year before last communication this is very important communication doesn't mean fluent english communication means you should be very clear 
in your communication meaning if you say something everybody should understand what you want to mean not other way around so you should be able to tell people what is there in your mind clearly in simple terms so that everybody understands that this is what you expect them to do so that they can perform come back to you and get the credit suppose you don't communicate well then they do the opposite and then they come back saying that sir it is done then you start firing them i didn't want to you say that i didn't want i didn't mean this i wanted you to do that so it is not them who are at fault they have put in so much effort and talent and what not at least passion but then ultimate result is negative so the fault is in you you could not communicate to them what you actually want and communication is not about just on a day to day basis what you do in the office not about a project communication is about communicating your vision communicating your values communicating the value proposition well so everything needs to be communicated so that everybody in the company is on the same page and they aspire they strive they put all their their efforts and time to achieve what you want to achieve everybody in the company will be a follower of you so you should be able to communicate well and you will find that it becomes a wonderful company just purely based on communication people at large in general are good people in general are good only some people because of their background they have kind of little bit peculiar psychology but then studies have established that everybody can be brought into your fold it requires effort different differentiated effort some people require more effort some people require less effort some people do not require any effort so it depends on how much effort you can put if you cannot put then get rid of people who you feel will never gel well team benefits team benefits from having an analytical think if somebody is analytically somebody thinks analytically is a is a great asset for the company other people like detail oriented process focused they identify and focus on the sub task needed to achieve the final goal long term goal there should be a product expert it's called prima donna suppose there is a or uh, there is an orchestra there will be a leader at the front who will be singing the song ba at the background there will be music and that person who is standing at the front is called prima donna meaning is a superstar so there should be a product expert around we see that he should be able to do whatever you want them to do she or she will ensure that you are always ahead of competition a leader who sway the decisions so that the team remains as a cohesive team rather than as a as an heterogeneous mix of things an industry expert you need an industry expert is kind of mix the product expert and industry expert is part of the same thing with deep experience a marketing expert marketing as i always mention that i am not from marketing but i believe that marketing is very critical for success of a company i am from finance background but still i put marketing as the primary uh, for for success of a company of a startup finance expert is necessary to make sure that you have always have the fund when you need you don't suddenly see that you are running out of cash a person with a fat purse always helps whenever you are in need of money and you don't find investor that person says that don't worry i am there i'll i'll chip in some money for the time being to for the stop gap more about balance team sharing knowledge and skill very important you may not realize why this is so important suppose you know a skill you know something majority of the people think that if i know this i will not teach anybody because if i teach somebody then i shall lose my superiority my value my cutting edge that doesn't help that doesn't help if you are a co-founder if you have the best interest of the company in mind you should always educate others so that they can take over and you you can look you can focus your attention to something else your 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 job is not on technology your job is to manage the enterprise your job is to become an entrepreneur who will have a futuristic view you will remain focused on what the technology is becoming moving forward so that your company never becomes a follower your company is always a 
a leader in technology and other things. So if you want to do that, you have to educate your staff before expecting them to deliver. Your, your employees should be such that they, they, they become autonomous. Without you, they can execute everything and then you at the end of the day, you find that everything is done in your absence. That is the best scenario. A good test of goal alignment is almost like vision alignment. Let each team member pitch before an independent person. Like suppose whenever I say uh, we shared vision, how to understand whether you share vision? You let every employee make a presentation about your vision. If you find that each employee is explaining something very different, you don't have a shared vision. If you find that everybody is making the reference to the same vision, you have a wonderful shared vision. That is what you should look for. In fact, periodically you should you should allow your employees to talk about it, have a program where they will make a presentation, they will talk about the vision, common goal. And if you see that it is missing, you should educate them that look, this is not what we exist for. We exist for this. So henceforth, fine tune your own philosophy, your own understanding about our company. So that in future, so that throughout your your uh, remaining service in the company or maybe throughout your remainder of the life, you know that our company exists for this and you strive to achieve that. The goal is not mere vision oriented, but requires strict ad adherence to performance metrics. It is not just shared vision, but what you are doing to achieve that vision is more important. First of all, you know the vision and then your performance to attain that vision is also important. Right. So commitment to the goal. Every member contributes. It's not that you contribute and someone is a sleeping partner and time and again he or she will telephone to know whether you are on track or maybe attends a board meeting. In the board meeting raises his hand. I don't agree with this. Whereas that person never comes and does anything, but sometimes suddenly he will say, I don't agree. So that doesn't actually help us. But then you should be very careful. Look at this example. Uh, Skoner, his name is Skoner. Skoner from MIT. He graduated with other MIT buddies and they thought that they are the best team player. And they started a company called Media Lab. We have Media Lab Asia at IIT Khadakpur after they set up. So we are part of the beneficiaries. But then after he set up the company, he realized that everybody in the team has a different orientation, alignment. Some people want money immediately to pocket the money. Some people have medium term objective. Some people only have long term vision. So it is not always necessary that your buddies from university are the best team members. It's very difficult to understand. There's no formula, no proven formula for that, but Definitely, it's difficult, but you have to be vigilant all the while. And it is the founder's mentality that will determine how far a particular individual is ready to become a co-founder with you. And what a founder, founder's mentality. I covered it earlier. I said we will cover it again. So here I have many slides on this. What is founder's mentality? There are three things. One is... Uh, one is insurgent mentality or mindset, meaning if there is something to be done, something is to be done by even at the cost of lives. That is what an insurgent will tell you that if I am given a mission, I am going to achieve that. I will not bother whether my life is at stake or not. Same, almost same thing should be in startup. They will not think about their personal career or or day to day achievement, how much money I have earned today or tomorrow or how my my parks are going this side, that side. They will achieve the mission at any rate. Then there is something called uh, owner's mentality or owner's mindset. Owner's mindset is like this. If you are a owner of something, you become highly committed and you have an eye for everything. You don't think of you know, uh, similarly like, uh, like in certain missions, 
you don't think of personal gains or anything. You you think that anything that of the company is important. I have more slides. I'll explain more about that. Then something. Uh, the third quality is uh, front line obsession. Front line means it it is almost like a war, and the team and the army which is there at the front they are con called front line. At the front line, there is no alternative but to achieve the goal. Meaning, you have the enemy in the front, you have to conquer them. There is no alternative. If you show your back to the enemy, they are going to fire at you and life is gone. So if you are at the front line in a startup, it is not any me. The connotation is different. Here there are customers and your objective is that if somebody is approaching to you, you will convert that, that prospect into a customer no matter what. You are going to tell him, him or her stories and then convincing them about the product, about why your product is superior, etc. You will convert any prospect to a customer, otherwise it's a missed opportunity. So strong insurgent mission keeps you externally focused on the problem you want to solve. You never lose focus at work relentlessly to keep the promises to customer by, con by continuing to innovate on their behalf, almost radically passionate. The speed of execution, focus to value proposition and connection to customers are part of insurgent mentality. Owner's mentality, accountability, meaning whatever you are doing, you take responsibility. If for any action, something negative happens, meaning you lose something, you don't say that so and so is responsible or luck is responsible or the customer is not good or suppliers, etc. You take responsibility that yes, if you find that there is some opportunity to take the responsibility, take the responsibility. Don't falsely take the responsibility, that doesn't help. And if you see that one particular employee is really, really responsible for wrongdoing, don't put all the blame. Definitely tell them that look, this is the result of so and so action. But I think I am also equally responsible because I could have kept a check on that and saved you from this ignominy or something. So that the other person who is actually responsible feels that you are taking side, his side. At the same time, they will realize that, you know, everybody tries to perform and take take some credit that is that that's what that's why we work in an in an organization that i'll do something my hod my director will notice that and so at some point of time they will say good good job well done or something you know that gives more satisfaction than the paycheck that you receive at the end of the month every month you will also realize when you work so don't blame too much take responsibility Actions that are for best interest of the company, you take those actions. Voicing anything that goes against, you definitely raise your voice. In short, it is the growing sense that success of the company is either personal, is directly connected to your personal success. That is what is ownership mentality. Frontline obsession, I have already explained, I will not go into. So all these moving forward will be this kind of, just a minute, let me take the attendance, otherwise... Uh, some people will leave and then I'll miss the attendance. Okay, from the companies that have gr grown profitably to scale often consider themselves insurgent as if they're waging a war on their industry and its standards on behalf of the underserved customer or creating an entirely new industry altogether. Maybe they're in the same segment, but they will define their own segment in a manner. They'll come up with a the product. Their customer will think that we, be, we belong to a different community, different group, and this company is serving us. Something like that. They will have their own customer base defined by them. They have a clear sense of mission focused yeah, this this is this this is a copy from this part, but then I find owners sorry founders mentality is very well defined here. Owners mindset. There are three things that define owners mindset: strong cash focus, bias for action, meaning they will do anything for action, not inaction. 
something has to be done, they will take it. They will do it because they feel that they are the owner. They will not wait for somebody to give them advice that, OK, you do this if it is good for the company. They will not wait. If they think that this is good for the company, they will immediately do. Aversion to bureaucracy. They will not wait for, you know, hierarchy. That if I have to do something, I'll send a mail to my boss. My boss will send it to the, his boss and finally some instruction will come. Not like that. They feel that this company belongs to me and I have to do whatever is good for the company. Founders, uh, insurgency, bold mission, spikiness, meaning sharp action. Spike, it comes from spike. Limitless horizon, meaning the whole universe is the horizon, something like that. Frontline obsession, relentless experiment, frontline empowerment. My network is slightly bad. It gives indication that any time my network may go off. Customer advocacy. So I'll not explain much more owner's mentality. The difference between employees who operate with owner's mindset and those who do not can be as great as the difference between devoted parents and restless babysitter. If you see some YouTube videos of babysitters, you will know that whatever money, however money, money you give, they are never replacement of parents. The way parents feel about the baby, the babysitter will never be able to do. That is human. We should not expect. Similarly, if somebody thinks that this company is his company or her company, irrespective of whether he or she has any equity stake in the company or not, it makes a humongous differentiation. So we should be able to give the sense of ownership to everybody. How you inculcate that is a subject that you should you should you should learn gradually. Early hire, very important. I'll quickly cover this because this is the last part. You get to know them if you have worked with them. You know, hiring people through advertisement or through referral advertisement is the worst thing. Referral is better. Uh, but then if you have worked with somebody and noticed that somebody really works well and he or she gels well with other, his work as a team member. Nothing like that. That is the best way of selecting team. Good communication skill is great asset. Risk taking attitude is essential. If you are coming up with a new idea or somebody comes up with a new idea in the team, other people will say, I have never heard about it. I don't think this is going to work. This kind of negativism doesn't work. People should come up with new ideas, experiment. Experimentation is very important. And then you will ultimately find something good. Work with people and check if you genuinely like, respect, and you have known long enough to be sure not just you know people make drama as if they are good people but then if you work with them for a long time only then you will know mark jacoba he says i like smart people i like people who try to get things done not people who will just empower others only not just empowering he will make sure that pe other people are working is delivering he believes in delivery not you know telling big big <sighs> He would like to understand, do I want to spend a lot of time around him? Better even, will I be comfortable reporting to this guy? Meaning that, shall I be able to kind of okay if that person becomes my boss? And people with good communication. Early recruits, talented early employees can fill some skill gaps. That is very important and they will drive the company to new height. They have the founder's mentality. Gradually, they start feeling both from your empowerment and from within, they will start feeling that this company belongs to me and whatever happens means if something is getting lost, something is getting wasted, they will immediately take action to prevent that. Thankfully, most, most great talents, they feel excited about working in new companies because there they get the opportunity to do a lot of experiment and get the excitement of you know, achieving something which is not possible in a large organization. They will come up with new ideas and it will allow them to, you know, uh, flourish in that, meaning uh, putting that idea into fruition. So that is kind of excitement that normally uh, new employees would like to get, that kind of opportunity new, idea, new employees like to get. Many of them like to feel the excitement of the startup without having too much stake. They will not even bother about stick. They are motivated by the opportunity to work on a problem that is core to the company's success. That they want to feel that because of me, this company is successful because I started building this. The activities are not bounded by rules. 
So if you say that this is the rules, they will not feel comfortable. They will switch to another company. They get a chance to build a brand. Maybe that's a great thing that they, they value. Early stage employees may also aspire to the opportunity to create personal wealth as well, meaning some shares and then that shares becomes highly valuable. You know, also remember that hiring a person is difficult, but firing becomes very, very difficult. If you hire a person, he comes with the family as a child, get admitted in a school. Now suddenly you realize that this person is not good. If you fire him, he has to shift the entire family from that place to another place. The very thought will prevent you from taking that action. Whereas this person may be polluting the entire atmosphere. So before recruiting, you should be very, very sure that you want this person to be associated for a long, long time. So and you should not recruit too many people. You should recruit only when you are scaling because everybody is going to be a liability to the company on a monthly basis, daily basis. You have to pay salary. If you're not using their skills, it is just addition to the burn rate, meaning you are burning cash. So slow decision process, it will slow the decision process because there are too many people and there are too much of hierarchies. You add complexity, etc., etc. So look for caps. Caps means capacity, capability, then self-motivation, adaptability to change, ethics, team player, hardworking, knowledge seeking, knowledge seeking, self-assured, passionate, all these are quality that you should look for. Marketing approach to recruiting, meaning you should tell your own story to attract people. Your, they should buy your story. It should resonate with their personal aspiration only then they will be ready to work with you. Who are the right person? Failed or successful startup are the best persons because they they already have the, the perception about the company, the struggle that you will go through, and they will fill some founders gap, some skill gaps also. Working experience in a startup is another good thing. Person with demonstrable creative talent, founders aspiration. If somebody tells you during interview that I want to start my own company, that is why I'm here. I want to learn. Don't think that this is this person will jump ship. That is why I won't take him should not be that you know they will work wholeheartedly and they will try to groom them as as entrepreneur so you will get some entrepreneurs among employees that is very important read the other part not much is left people with long experience should be avoidable because they come up with a lot of emotional baggage some rule baggage they will say that this is not good that is not good job hoppers are not good if somebody has already already changed three four jobs just stay away from that kind of people. They will they will join your company immediately. Start shooting resume to other companies. They are never happy with with any company. Interested in high designation or high salary are not good. How to identify? You participate in hackathon conferences. Then you look at them and then talk to them closely. Give them a project maybe, and then see how they deliver. You ask them to work with one of your employees and see whether they are really gelling well. Only then you should hire that person. It's very important. What should be the do's and don't? Last slide, I believe. Do reference check for antecedent. Did they do any unethical thing anywhere? Why, why, whether they were fired or they left the job, check if the person is a super performer, even a fresher may have demonstrable capability in some, some of their projects. Try hiring and retaining the best talent even at a salary that is more than your benefit or more than the industry average because that person will drive success for the company. So the single man can suck can drive the success even more than you. Don't be afraid of talented people. Don't be afraid of talented people. You will have an opportunity to be with a talented guy and improve your own talent level. Check if the company mission is aligned with that person. If in doubt, never, never hire. Don't think that, okay, I'm in doubt, but nevertheless, let us take him and then see, never do that. If you are in doubt, just don't hire. Don't hire because you know firing becomes so very difficult. If an employee is not effective, a troublemaker, fire him right now. Don't give more time. If you give more time, it is going to aggravate the situation for both for the employee as well as for the company. Because the more time you give, his or her situation becomes more complex and he or she creates more pollution in your company atmosphere. One may not be a natural manager. You have to teach them. 
So if you find that somebody doesn't talk like a manager, don't think that he's not a good employee. If he or she has talent otherwise, then you can groom them. Every new employee redefines the culture. This is very important. Last line is very important. You hire somebody and that somebody, suppose you hire a Russian who you think that is technically excellent, but then he's a Russian. No, suppose nobody wants him in the team. Then either that way or suppose he brings some some philosophy that is that is detrimental to the whole culture of your company it's going to become a very difficult thing these are some of the references and thank you thank you very much so if there is question we don't have time nevertheless if there are question and if you want to step out i am here